What's up guys, Asian here again with another Trials Boss video and today we're going to be going over the Refabrication Committee. So this is the fourth boss of Halls of Fabrication uh, and they're known collectively as the Refabrication Committee. Uh, so these are three different bosses, each of them have about 26 million health I believe or maybe around 27, I'm not 100% uh, certain on the specific amount of health they have. Uh, but you can see here that there's going to be three different bosses so that's why they're called the Committee. So you have the Reducer which is going to be the left boss here. You have the Reclaimer, which is the middle boss, and you have the Reactor, which is the rightmost boss here. Uh, some groups, uh, particularly in Hellfire, you might have heard me say this a couple of times, we call it the Fire Boss, the Lightning Boss, and then Center Boss. Uh, some people just call them by their names, Reducer, Reclaimer, Reactor. Uh, other people go left and right, uh, so Reducer would be left and Reactor would be right. It's kind of up to you how you want to do that sort of... Um, sort of naming convention, uh, but it's important that you do have that naming convention um, as we'll go, uh, see later on uh, because there is a mechanic where you will need to stop DPS uh, on these bosses at certain points in the fight, uh, so it's important to have that naming convention down so that way you know to call as the raid lead or you know as if the raid lead says you know if anybody sees it call it out. You know you can say uh, reducer stop DPS on reducer or stop DPS on flame boss or something like that just so everybody is kind of on the same page. Uh, so this fight is going to be from a tank perspective which is probably the most mechanic heavy um, out of uh, the five fights in Halls of Fabrication. Uh, so I will take some time uh, to have to pause and to kind of explain the different mechanics for the tanks. Uh, I will also be explaining DPS, healer mechanics, uh, things like that. So uh, just starting off, uh, we you'll be splitting into basically two groups. Uh, so one group will be taking the reducer, the other group will be taking the reactor. It's going to be a tank and healer in each group, and then four DPS on each side. You can kind of divide up the DPS however you'd really like. Uh, so for a lot of progression style guilds, um, people tend to have the magic DPS on the left hand side uh, just because the reducer does have a, a move that's difficult to avoid in melee range uh, but depending on how comfortable your group is uh, with their survivability particularly the stamina DPS uh, you could go split it up um, you know have a couple of stam on the reducer in order to even out the DPS the idea here is that the DPS between the reducer and the reactor are about even uh, so that way um, you both get down to a the uh, health thresholds at around the same time. Uh, so that's kind of the general idea. So you can you know, move DPS around accordingly uh, depending on uh, you know, how quickly each boss is going down. Uh, so we're not going to have anybody on the Reclaimer. That is the center boss there. And now, even though we have healers on starting off on either side, uh, eventually, uh, during when the Reclaimer starts to summon his adds and do his mechanic, uh, one of the healers will be moving with the group, uh, and then the other healer will be staying back and healing both tanks. Uh, so while healers are considered left and right healer, uh, it's more accurate to describe it as a tank healer and group healer. Um, so that's kind of uh, another way to kind of think about healing. So let's go ahead and get started with this fight here. So we're just going to start off here. You can see here that we're just DPSing the boss right now. Not much to worry about. So they have a heavy attack. It's pretty standard. Now this is the reducer mechanic right there. So that is called um, melting point. And basically you saw there he does a nice little wind up. Uh, his, his weapon catches fire. And then he launches out three of those flaming um, kind of whirlwinds that you see moving out right there. So that will apply a dot called melting point. You can see it called right here melting point. Uh, and it will basically deal flame damage ticks uh, on whoever has that dot. Now melting point is purgeable. So healers will need to have purge. Uh, both healers ideally will have purge because um, uh, there might be hit other people as you saw there while it does move out uh, it kind of moves out in the trident shape so there's always going to be one that moves right ahead and then there's going to be two that split off at about 120 degrees um, angles if you think of it as a circle uh, so it's basically uh, kind of like a, a Y shape with one uh, line down the middle there uh, and it, if it does hit one of these sides there it will bounce around um, so it is nice to have both healers running purge just in case if the flame uh, whirlwind does happen to hit the people over on the reactor side uh, that has happened a few times uh, so that's just something to keep in mind there burning melting point on a tank doesn't really hurt too much um, but on dps and healers it can take for quite a big amount so you do want to purge that as soon as it comes out so we're going to go ahead and keep on continuing on the this fight here you can see here that the reactor uh, the reclaimer in the middle just kind of targets one person doesn't really hit for all too much here 
All right, so there's the reactor had just did his his mechanic there. So you can see these uh, what we call grabby hands, uh, bad touches, you know, um, traps. There's multiple names that you can call them. Uh, but basically what the reactor does, that's the right boss, uh, the reactor will basically plunge a sword into the ground and uh, basically shoot out lines of electricity. And where those lines of electricity end up is where these traps will spawn. Stepping on these traps will basically kind of stun you. They pull you down uh, into the ground and you're kind of stuck there. You can use break free to pull yourself out and then get out of the traps. And while you're stuck there, obviously you're taking damage. So you just want to be mindful of where the traps end up. Particularly with this next mechanic here, uh, the, the swap mechanic that's coming up right here. Uh, so uh, it's really important to kind of pay attention to where the, the lines are going because where they're going is going to be where the traps spawn. Uh, so as a DPS, as a healer, and as a tank, you just kind of have to be aware of where everything is. You do have a grace period in which after it spawns, you can kind of move out of it without getting caught underneath it. Uh, so just be very mindful of when they spawn underneath you and then just move out of the way here. So now we're going to be talking about the tank mechanic here. So uh, one thing I do recommend people do if you're a tank, uh, you don't have to really uh, download this add-on if you're not a healer or a raid lead uh, or a DPS, uh, but definitely you want this as a tank. Uh, and that's going to be the Asylum Sectorium status panel. Uh, so you see here we have a swap timer and then we have a trap spawn timer. So uh, the trap mechanic that I just talked about, it happens every 30 seconds. So when this hits 30, that's when he'll do his trap mechanic. And then swap timer, this is going to be the countdown to the boss swap mechanic. Uh, so there are instances uh, where you know bo uh, tanks have to swap bosses, for example, in the twins. Uh, for example, twins. Uh, for the twins, you have to swap bosses. In those scenarios, typically speaking, the tank just cross taunts. Uh, basically, you taunt the other boss, you let it come to you, and that's it. In this scenario, you can't quite do that, and that's because if the three, any of the three uh, bosses here are close enough together, they'll become empowered. Basically, just like the hunter killers, the first boss of halls, there's a little beam between them. Um, and that basically empowers all their attacks. So if they get too close, they start to empower each other, and that's why you don't want to cross taunt them because if they're empowered, their mechanics are also empowered. So let's say the reducer is empowered when he does his melting point, it ticks for a pretty big margin, and it's pretty much like two ticks on a DPS and you're dead, uh, compared to like three or f even four ticks on a DPS. Uh, so instead of cross taunting, basically taunting the other boss, what you're going to be doing instead is you're going to be using a charge ability, in this case shield charge, you'll be charging to the other boss and then taunting the other boss right when you get to it. That way the bosses pretty much stay on their separate sides so they're not going to empower each other that way. Uh, so that's kind of how you deal with that uh, sort of swap mechanic. Typically speaking, you'll have one tank countdown. Uh, so you can see here, Raid Notifier will have what's called Aura Countdown, and it'll count down from 10 all the way down to zero. And when you hit zero, if you haven't swapped taunts, then it's gonna be an insta-kill on you. Um, and then um, the status panel does have a countdown to when the timer actually starts. So it happens about every 30 seconds or so. Uh, so that's why we're using both of these here. The first one here is to tell me when we have to call out swaps, and then the second one here tells me how much time I have left in order to do the swaps. So this is an example of how you do the, the tank swap mechanic. Now it's really important to try to position the bosses so that way the tanks aren't caught on the grabby hands here. Three, two, all right, swap. In. You can see here we did a charge and then we taunted them away. Now they are connected. So you do want to try to disconnect them if you can. So basically just move them away from each other just so they're not empowered. And then you just repeat this fight over uh, and over again. So you can see here that the Reclaimer uh, had started his mechanic here. And I will, I'll stop, pause it on the next uh, add mechanic. Uh, so the Reclaimer has its own mechanic as well. So this is another swap mechanic. So you do want to try to time the swap uh, kind of right after the heavy attack if you can. It all depends on how where everything falls together. Sometimes you won't be able to do that. You have about 10 seconds from when the countdown actually starts in order to swap. So you do have some time there. Don't feel like you have to rush right when the countdown starts to go. Uh, but you will need to swap eventually. Uh, so the best time would be when either of them are doing their mechanics. So uh, the flame melting point for reducer or traps for the reactor um, or right after they do a heavy attack. So just be mindful of that because when you do charge, uh, you do drop your block. So if you time it incorrectly, you can actually die uh, right before you do a charge because you drop block, he hits you before you manage to get away with the charge moves. That's just something to keep in mind there when you do the swap mechanic. Alright, so this is the uh, Reclaimer um, 
mechanic here. It's called the Ruin Fabricant Spawn. We call them bombers, you can call them runners, you can call them ads, whatever you need to do in your group in order to get the point across. Uh, so if you can see here, he basically raises his hand up and you see little sparks coming out and those sparks will basically spawn these little bomber ads. Uh, these bomber ads will slowly t start walking towards the reclaimer. Uh, you can see here the reclaimer has this little shield around him. Uh, melee DPS don't stand in the shield, you'll get damaged obviously. Uh, but the ads will slowly start walking until they get to the reclaimer and once they get to the reclaimer they'll become empowered and then they'll run towards a random player and explode. Uh, you can't uh, block the stun from the explode, you'll always be stunned after it explodes. Um, and you can block and shield it though to kind of reduce the damage because it does count as direct damage. Uh, so that's up. So basically, what you want to do as a DPS is basically you want to DPS all of these down before they get to the reclaimer. Basically, you don't want any bombers reaching the center boss if you can help it. Uh, so the healers, uh, the group healer will typically be responsible for applying elemental drain to all the adds as they spawn, as well as making sure the group remains healed up. Uh, because you know there there is some damage coming out, the reclaimer will be attacking uh, the DPS here and there. Plus, you also have melting point. You have uh, maybe somebody might get caught in traps, and you will eventually, you know, occasionally might have a bomber that comes out and then and hurts somebody. Uh, so you do just want to keep that in mind. Uh, you know, as a healer, you kind of want to just keep an eye on everybody. Ideally, nobody should be taking damage during this phase. Uh, you just have to watch out for melting point, obviously, uh, if it happens to get into the group. Uh, and your main priority will be alley draining all the different ads. Now you can see here uh, up on the left hand corner we have percentages, these are the, uh, the health percentages um, and you can see here that the uh, reactor and reducer, uh, their percentages are now yellow. Uh, so there is a uh, certain health threshold that I mentioned earlier that you kind of have to bring the bosses down to and those thresholds are 69%, 39%, and 19%. Uh, once any of the bosses hit that percentage. So let's say the reducer hits 69%, they become invincible and they will become empowered. And then just like when they're connected, uh, that empowers their mechanics as well. So uh, what you have to do in order to get them out of that invulnerability phase is you actually have to connect all three of them together in order to basically stun them, remove the invulnerability, and basically start to fight all over again up into the next health threshold, so 39 or, or 19%. Uh, so what a lot of groups do is they stop DPS at around 71, 72 percent, uh, 42, 41, or 22, 21 percent. Uh, some groups go even as far as uh, 70, 40, 20 percent. And what they do is they basically wait for a time to bring the reactor and the reducer into the center uh, so, that, so that they're all connected together. Uh, you have to bring them into the center because the reclaimer doesn't move. Uh, so you will run it in and uh, you will typically have a healer, uh, Templar healer drop a Nova, you'll have your magic DPS drop their Destra ults, and you basically just DPS them all down to that 69, four, uh, 39 or 19% health threshold until they're stunned. Then the tanks bring them out and then you repeat the fight all over again, except for that final stun, that 90% stun. So uh, we'll just continue on with the video here uh, up until we get to that stun phase so I can kind of explain what's going on here. So let's move ahead. Okay, so you can see here uh, that so you can see here that the bosses are all at around 71 percent. Reclaimers at 71, reactors at 72, reducers at 73. Now, what you want to bring them in is going to be uh, basically you need to have very good timing uh, associated with it, and you're going to have to be have as a raid lead a lot of situational awareness with what's going on in the field um, while this is happening. So ideally. You don't want to bring him in if the trap spawn timer is around 20 seconds or greater because there is the chance that the reactor will stop halfway into the run to the center and do his mechanic, in which case he won't move for the next about uh, 6 or 7 seconds or something like that. So you want to avoid that. You want to ideally bring him in uh, when the trap spawn timer has less than uh, 10 seconds remaining, so uh, 19 seconds or below. And then the other thing too you want to watch out for is the ads. You don't want to bring them in while their ads going in because uh, you just don't want to risk having uh, the ad come in because everybody will be in the center at that point and if one of them explodes, uh, it deals more damage to more people are in that explosion. So it's going to end up wiping the group if you bring them in while their ads uh, that explode. Uh, so you kind of also want to time it with the, the ad as well. So basically the ideal time to bring them in is either towards the tail end or right after um, a bomber phase has happened. So if there's like one or two bombers left, then go ahead, bring them in. That's not a big deal. Um, and th also, 
there is less than 10 seconds until the next traps. Uh, some people like to do 5 seconds. Uh, I personally prefer 10 just to play on the safe side. Uh, so if those conditions are met, I, uh, me as a raid lead, I won't call in to bring him into the center. Uh, so that's just, just basically based on your own personal preference and what you do here. So uh, let's go ahead and move ahead. And if you don't have those conditions, then you can just hold them back here and just have your DPS not do anything. I'd also, you can see here we have one dead person. We do want to uh, have everybody alive uh, for this center phase here. Bring them in now. So we're bringing them in now. See here, they're all connected, and you're going to basically drop death rolls. You see the death rolls have dropped. And there you go, they're all stunned, and then you can bring them all back out once again. Now you will notice uh, now that after this first stun phase, you have conduit strikes going down. Uh, so these are basically the exact same conduit strikes that uh, the capacitors do to you throughout the, 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 the trial here. You just want to block through them. If you get caught by one of the conduit strikes uh, or the little uh, balls that come out after a conduit strike happens, you will get stunned, so you just want to block through that as a DPS and as a healer. And so basically, after the sun phase, you just bring them back out, and you just repeat it all over again. Uh, you saw there that I used magma armor uh, while I bring them in. That's because they are still empowered, so that's something to keep in mind. So burning point, melting point, is still going to hit harder, so healers really have to be on top of getting the purges off right when it happens. It's a very clear telegraph, so you will be able to tell right when it happens. And then um, DPS, just remember to shield up if you're magicka, have blade cloak up if you're stamina, and just DPS everything down that way. And so the, this just repeats itself all over again. Uh, from here on out, the mechanics pretty much don't change at all. The only thing that's added in is the conduit strikes start to happen now. You still have to do your swaps. They still do all their mechanics. They, you know, they still empower themselves. You just have to deal with the conduit strikes now. Uh, they happen fairly often. So we're going to go ahead, move ahead to the next stun phase. So the next stun phase, you can see here, is about 40 42% is when we brought them in. Some uh, Hellfire, for instance, for example, we bring them at, at 41%. Uh, some groups bring them at 40%. It's all up to you when you decide to bring them in. So this is the second stun phase. Nothing changes between the first and the second stun phase. You can see their melting point. Just want to make sure to purge that right away. And so at 39%, they are all stunned. You bring them back out. And then you repeat it yourself once more. Again, nothing changes uh, at this point. Now, you can see here that sometimes, depending on when you bring him in, uh, he'll sometimes go into his animation, whether that happens uh, while he is in the center or while you're trying to bring him out. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, so in this instance, we did do his traps mechanic, uh, and he is close enough to the center boss that uh, he will be connected after once the cooldown uh, is expires. So let's see if it happens here. Get ready to swap. Okay, so that didn't happen there, but uh, sometimes it will happen. Uh, so that's just something that you want to keep in mind there when you bring out the reactor. Uh, and just call it out if he happens to be doing his trap in the middle. Because sometimes you have to swap. Sometimes uh, they're, they're in too long, so they become empowered. That's just something to keep in mind uh, for that final swap. Now for the last swap here, we'll go here. This is at 20%, or rather 19% is the actual uh, percentage when they will stun each other. And this is going to be execute phase. So this is the most important uh, stun phase not to push him over. As soon as one of them hits 19%, this, the execute mechanic will start. So don't want to push any of these past... Uh, you don't want to push any of these to 19% uh, until you are ready to bring them all into the center. Go ahead and bring them in. Right now. We're going to have to swap. Go Morgan. Morgan. Get in faster. Get ready to swap. So the execute mechanic has started. So now for this final stun phase here, there's going to be the bombers that you saw earlier. They're going to be starting to spawn around the outside of the arena here. So let's move ahead a little bit and see if you can, you can see them. The tanks are still going to bring out the bosses. And all the bosses still do all of their mechanics. So you can see here that the DPS and healers uh, are basically all kind of stacked together right here around uh, where the reclaimer is if you are right stacking right behind the butt here. Uh, and this is because of that execute mechanic that you might end up seeing. 
so for this particular mechanic, uh, execute mechanic, some people like to have throw down a second Nova because you still have bombers and you still need to uh, kill the bombers as they come in, uh, but you won't be able to run around and get them because the execute mechanic. Uh, so what a lot of people do is they just drop a second Nova down and they hope that to kill the reclaimer before any of the bombers come in. And if there are bombers that get close, hopefully the AOEs from Endless Hail, Caltrops, uh, Liquid Lightning, Block 8, all that uh, ends up killing the bombers before they explode because again uh, if you get a bomber and get through during execute phase then it becomes very risky because if it explodes in one of the if it targets one of these people it's pretty much going to be a group wipe so it's really important to kill those bombers uh, as they come in you can see here the tanks are still bringing out the two side bosses here uh, just so that way they're not connected and empowering each other uh, we're one looking ahead to towards down. the uh, execute mechanic here so that is what I'm talking about with the execute mechanics. So you see the bombers are spawning and they'll start exploding. They start on the very outside and then they slowly make their way in. So you can see here that the second row has started to come in, so I had to move in a little bit more here. Okay, bring in the reducer. Okay, and then after you kill the reclaimer, uh, typically the order is uh, you kill the reclaimer first, then you bring in the reducer, which is the flame boss, and then you bring in the reactor and kill the reactor last. Uh, so you can see here we're going to swap. So you still have to do all the swapping mechanics. So you can see here they're, they're still stacked right where the reclaimer is. You can see the dead body there. Reducer is brought into the center. Everyone's stacked in the center here. We're killing the reducer. You can see the bombers are coming closer. Once the reducer is dead, we bring in the reactor and we kill the reactor. So there is a DPS check here. If you take too long, these bombers will eventually get over to the center point here and kill all of you. Go, so it is Pretty important to kind of meet that DPS yeah. check to go into execute yeah. with everybody still alive. And that is basically the refabrication committee. So this is probably the, in my opinion, the hardest boss in Halls of Fabrication. Uh, so don't feel bad if you're stuck on this. Uh, Hellfire was stuck on this for quite a while until we managed to get it together and you know it's still the boss that gives us the most difficulty in Halls of Fabrication. If you can get past the Refabrication Committee, then you're pretty much good to go for Assembly General. The Assembly General, mechanically-wise, is not as bad as um, the Refabrication Committee. It is a longer fight. Uh, you can see here, uh, I'm not sure if you guys can actually see, but this was a nine-minute fight. Um, so the Assembly General typically takes uh, anywhere from 15 to, to 18 minutes for your typical group, depending on your specific group DPS and what strategies you use, how many people die, things like that. Um, so that is it for this particular boss. If you guys have any questions or you need any sort of clarifications on the mechanics or strategies that uh, Mayflower or Hellfire Dominion uses, please feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Hope you guys found this video informative and I will see you guys on the final video of the Halls of Fabrication boss guide. Uh, that's going to be the Assembly General.